Welcome back everybody, it's Josh from Electric Bikes Brisbane and I'm very excited today to talk about a very special bike to me. It's because it's my bike. So here we have in front of me, we've got the Reesen Muller Supercharger GT Roll-Off. Walking through the bike and essentially why I chose the bike. First of all, I actually went hardtail over dual suspension. Hardtail for me was just what I needed for a commute perspective. So really I like to be attached to the road, feeling the lumps and bumps. It's just part of the riding experience for me. The other thing is I chose Roloff, essentially because it's in my name. Uh, so my surname is Roll, and so obviously I put the Roll in Roloff. So Roloff is a 14 speed gear hub with electronic shifting on the handlebars. It's really good, it's got a 520% range of gearing and so essentially whatever hill that you're on, you'll be able to climb it. Honestly, on a commute perspective, I'd mostly use about seventh to the 11th gears because really you can use the turbo mode of the bike to push you through those little hills and things. If I were to use tour or anything else, I might bump that down to fifth gear. Now that fifth gear is actually really important because with roll off, it has an automatic downshift to the fifth gear once you pull up to a set of lights or the like. So that way you're always at the right gear when you start off. Personally, I found that fifth gear might be a little bit too low sometimes. So once it's shifted down, I do shift up a couple more times as well. With that in mind, always do remember, and I have fluffed this a couple of times, if you pull over to a stop and then pull away too quickly whilst it's trying to downshift, it will sound a bit clunky and be a bit unhappy. So just make a dedicated stop, wait for the noise that roll off makes, and then get going again. For me, with the 14 speed, there's actually two segments. And so one thing I like to do without having to look at the display to shift gears is you can change to seventh gear on a downhill. You actually hear the belt drive noise disappear. And then that way I can use the triple shift feature at the bottom of the hill to be in my perfect gear every time, which is again about that 10th gear. From a user perspective, looking at roll off, generally that means that you'll have a belt driven system. Now belt driven systems, as you may well know, they last so, so long. At the moment, we're currently seeing riders up to 20,000 Ks before they need to be replaced and very, very rarely drop. Maintenance on the other hand, again, much, much longer into the future. You do need an oil change every 5,000 K. You can buy the kit separately. Of course, you can come into our shop and our service team will be happy to help you. Other things about roll off, as standard, it comes straight on the handlebars to the side. I actually invested in a spare or third party accessory that drops that roll off adapter. So it's more in line where a traditional uh, derailleur button setup would be. And for me, I find that a little bit more ergonomic. So talking about some of the other accessories that I put on this bike. So on the front, you can see that we've got the lovely new Reese and Muller bag. Personally, I find the panniers, whilst fantastic and waterproof, a little bit slower to put on and put off. So something small and easy and adaptable like the bag here is great. The front carrier also is handy if you did want to strap anything else and a bit more robust. This bike actually came standard with the uh, Ergon GP3 grips. A lot of people talk about the GP3 grips as a means of increasing the ride height and the ride position. But personally, after riding it for a few weeks now, I think it's really to do with just the pressure on your hands and just relieving it from a different perspective. That way you can ride longer without hurting your hands. Also standard with the bike, you get a couple of these fabric water bottles, which just fit on the mounts underneath here. Really easy to pull on and pull off. And some people have found that they do fall off on harder trails and the like but I was doing 55K down a gravel road and they still didn't come off. So I really think they're locked on solid. You will notice this big beefy lock. Now this is the smart alarm system from Avis and this has a 100 dB alarm on it and big beefy links. Honestly, the security rating on this is fantastic. I love this bike. I don't want it going anywhere. So when I'm leaving it for a while, I will put this on. Really, really cool feature. Uh, you pair it to your phone and it maps the last location where the bike was locked up. 
Additional to locking that and maybe a quicker and simpler solution, we've got the lovely saddle bag and adapter chain. Now, you might be familiar with that adapter chain, which plugs into the rear wheel just underneath here. It's super quick and simple, really good security, and for those quick trips in and out of the grocery shops, I find it more than enough. The additional security feature and the final one is actually built into the display. So, if you pair your display with the eBike Connect app, you can purchase an additional locking feature so that when you pull the display off the bike, it'll beep at you and then disengage the motor noise, uh, the motor power, I should say. So if someone wanted to ride away with the bike, they'd have no power. But also, if they were to put a, an additional nylon display on there, it'd still be locked and not usable. So wrapping up, it's unbelievably comfortable. It's so, so capable, and I know that for the future years, I'll be able to grow with the bike. The dual batteries are gonna be able to take me everywhere and anywhere. And honestly, all the little things, I think I'll be learning them for over a while. But for now, I'm in love with it. I'm enjoying the features and can't wait to tell you more about it later.